For this next step in the drawing, I'm going to switch to a mechanical pencil with a 2B lead in it as usual. And just a reminder, begin by drawing the outline of the overall shape of your subject first, including the shadows. I know this seems like a complex image at first glance, but I've created some tools for you to use that are going to make drawing and painting this subject matter much easier. I'll start here on the top left. In fact, I would venture to say that this image is going to be easier to paint than the kettle. I suppose that will differ from person to person, but because it's an organic shape, it's much more forgiving and allows you to get away with far more interpretation, which is a nice way of saying mistakes. I'm confident you can manage the drawing stage at this point in the course, so I am going to move through this step at a quicker pace. However, I won't skip it all together in case some students need a hand with anything and I think it helps to see what my drawing looks like at the different stages to compare yours to and make sure you're on the right track. Okay, that completes the outline. Next, I'll begin drawing the interior shapes, starting by separating the shapes of the drop shadows. I'll begin with this small shadow here on the bottom, again, only because it's the one furthest to the left. If you're left-handed, you can work from right to left to avoid smudging your pencil lines, or just put a clean sheet of paper under your drawing hand. Do your best to ignore this shadow and just look for the edge of the rind for now. Remember, doing a drawing before starting a painting is a great way to get acquainted with the image and start creating a strategy to your approach as well as simplifying it in your mind. Later in this lesson, I'm going to teach you my visualization techniques to simplifying images like this using some props I created for you. I'll jump to this point next, and I'm doing my best to ignore everything else going on in this image, and just focus on this positive shape in my mind, to keep me from getting overwhelmed. Then simply continue outlining and separating each shape from its drop shadow. I'm doing my best to draw every line perfectly, but remember, this is a fruit, so it's okay if you're a bit off occasionally. Now that I've isolated the shadows from the outline, I'm going to start moving further inward to the interior shapes, starting with this one. Looks like I missed part of the shadow. I'll correct that before moving forward. I'm going to slow it down here for a moment because I know this is where it can get a little dicey. If you're having trouble, work along with me and let's take it one shape at a time. Watch what shape I choose, observe me drawing it, then pause your video and repeat what I did. I've begun by isolating this shape and focusing on it. I'm ignoring the rest of the image and thinking only about this outline.
I'm going to move to this shape next. Try to outline it first, then draw in the details inside of your outline. It's best to be systematic with an image this complex to avoid missing or overlooking information. And be prepared to spend some time on this drawing. It took me a few hours. It's best to learn not to feel rushed when it comes to creating art. That's why I made this course yours for life. Learn to enjoy the process. I'm positive everyone watching this lecture is capable of doing this drawing because you have the grid and my directions to help you along the way. And remember, no shading. You should just be outlining everything. This is a map, not a sketch. And again, if you find yourself having trouble defining where a shape begins and ends because its outline isn't perfectly defined, draw an outline right on your photo reference. You can always print a new one. Just so you know, I'm right here at this intersection. I know there's a lot going on here, so I'll walk you through my thought process. I want to outline the shape around that rind in the foreground and stay focused on just this one section right now. I'm sticking to one section of orange at a time because I know that if I start jumping around to different sections, I'll end up missing a lot of information. Ultimately, my approach is to focus on this section of grapefruit and its rind. Start with the outline of the whole image, then the outline of each individual object in the image, and finally focus on outlining the shapes within each object. Having said that, if you find that you're having trouble just focusing on one shape at a time, I've got you covered. Just go to the downloadable material I supplied you and look for the image featuring the isolated section of fruit, and you can rely on that to help you practice staying focused on one task at a time. If you need, you can even draw a grid on it. I'll work on this shape next. And again, to put your mind at ease, I chose a grapefruit for this because it's so forgiving. So don't worry about making a mistake once you've gotten into the detail shapes. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a minute. I strongly suggest taking breaks occasionally when working on something this complex. Get up and walk around for a few minutes. Doing that helps me stay focused for longer periods of time. Welcome back. Just to refresh your memory, I'm concentrating on one object at a time, outlining it first, then focusing on its details. This is an organization and visualization technique that has worked for me on painting six feet high with dozens of objects and far more complex and detailed images, so it's a powerful tool to learn and practice. As you can see, I've begun outlining the shape of the rind that's sitting in the foreground. Isolating this shape will help me focus on the one above it more easily. There, that'll help my mind isolate this one section of fruit and keep me from feeling overwhelmed. The next thing I want to do is define this shape in the rind. But because the orange value is so close to the color of the rind, it seems confusing. So here's what I'm going to do. Using your pencil, outline it on your photo reference. That will define its edge and make it no different than any other line you've drawn in the past. Remember, every line is equally important at this stage in the painting, so be sure to really define it. Okay, next I'm going to do the same and outline the next set of shapes inward from the outline. And as long as I'm here, I'll just continue up the side. This whole area is going to need to be defined and simplified.
And this image already looks much more simplified and manageable. Creating clear, defined lines in your photo reference is such a powerful simplification tool. But it's best done one piece at a time rather than doing the entire photograph at once. Remember, we want to get acquainted with this image, even if it means picking it apart one piece at a time. And as I move up, I outline the next shape, one at a time, and add it to my drawing. Just keep following the shape along, doing your best to keep count of the shapes and bumps. Okay, next, drawing right onto my photo reference again, I'm going to outline the white parts on the fruit. But don't just outline the pure white areas, outline these second value shapes as well. And repeat them on your drawing. Finally, we're left with this light, organic shape, so I'm going to outline it as best I can, ignoring the variations in value, omitting any detail so it's silhouetted and simplified as much as possible. I'll zoom in so you can see exactly what I outline. That's it. This is all the information you're going to need when it comes time to paint this part. Trust me, this is actually going to be one of the easier, more satisfying areas to paint later. Okay, that's it for this section of fruit. You should feel like you know this shape a little better after completing this process. It should seem at least a little simpler to you because your mind has compartmentalized it into manageable shapes now. To simplify and structure this image even more, you can draw shading lines across this dark shadow shape. But be sure not to shade it in. Remember, this is a map. Draw lines that symbolize a shadow. Everything you draw has to translate into a carbon copy, so straight parallel lines are enough to separate this shape and have it register as a shadow to your eye. In fact, I'm going to do this to all of the shadows. Of course, now I have to worry about smudging these lines moving forward. The solution is to put a piece of paper beneath your hand so you're not smudging what's underneath it. You can use any piece of 8.5 by 11 paper. I chose tracing paper so that you can see through it for the sake of this video. Next, I'm going to circle back to this area quickly because I just realized I forgot to outline the shadow. I'll move to this large shape on top next. 
This is an easy one because it's broken up naturally into two pieces by the split in the grapefruit. I've begun by outlining the shape in the rind where the orange color and white meet. Like in the last section of fruit, I'll begin with the shapes closest to the outline, draw them onto the photo reference one at a time, and work my way inward. Next, I'll outline the shape of the fruit inside the rind. Draw a line on your photo reference and move it over to your drawing, one at a time. This shape is next. Be sure to outline it on your photograph before adding it to your drawing. The reason I want to make sure to mention that is because it's an important shape in the structure of this object that will come in handy later while we're painting. And it's a tricky one to get right because it has soft, difficult to define edges. Now that I've got this shape isolated, I'm going to just focus on drawing the shapes inside of it next. I want to simplify those white veiny shapes around the outside by outlining them. It looks complicated, but once you look closely and start drawing, you'll see that it's actually only a few major lines. Ignore all the small stuff for now. And don't try to do everything at once. Start with the outermost shapes first, and we'll come back later and draw in these darker shapes near the middle. I'll move to the right hand side of the grapefruit next, and I'm going to begin by outlining all the shapes in this section. In this area, you're going to find a shape that looks complicated. Just outline it as best you can. Don't worry if it's not perfect. This is one of the areas that's very forgiving, and I'm going to show you an easy approach to handle it during the painting process. I'll zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm outlining. In a close-up like this, you can really see how boxy my line is. I'm not going around every curve. I'm just drawing straight lines to differentiate dark from light. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just get the major shapes and simplify it every chance you get. Finally, I'll outline this shadow to define the overall shape I'm working within for the next few minutes. As I said, this shape is very forgiving. If you get the value right and the major shape close, it's going to look good. If anything, it's more important to get the angles of the gesture of the shape to make sure it's following the fruit's natural flow. See how the angles of the veins are almost in the shape of a starburst? Okay, I'll begin with the outline of the shadow on the right and work my way inward. Actually, I'll start down here.
I'm right here in case you lost me. Now that I have this outline drawn in, I'm going to leave this shape as it is for a moment and jump down to this section in the foreground because I want to use it as an example to show you another simplification trick. And again, I've begun by defining some of the more vague shapes like the separation of color on the skin of the grapefruit from the white of the rind by outlining it right on my photo reference. Here's another trick to help you simplify and isolate areas you're working on. I'm going to hold the piece of paper I'm using under my hand to avoid smudging my drawing right up to a specific line right next to the section I'm working on. Doing this helps me focus on that specific area and keeps my eye from getting lost in the rest of the shapes every time I look back and forth from my drawing to my photo reference. This is a helpful technique whether you're using the grid system or not. Ultimately, your goal should be to consistently break a complex image down to smaller, manageable, bite-sized pieces. I've developed dozens of these tricks over the years that work for me. Feel free to come up with some yourself now that you understand the concept. There's no wrong answer here, and I'd love to hear your ideas if you'd like to share them with me and the other students in the course's public Q&A. I'm going to zoom in again so you can see just how roughly I'm outlining these shapes. You can just be drawing very angular lines to indicate the shape in here. It doesn't have to be a perfect silhouette. Once I've made it to this shape where the shadow changes direction, I'll move my tracing paper over a set of squares again to isolate the area I'm working in. I'm going to continue moving my paper over row by row in this fashion, so I'll pick up the pace of the video again until the next part that I think is a teachable moment. Okay, that's enough information for this section. Don't worry about any of the bumps or information in here for now. It's debatable whether or not to just leave all of that for the painting stage. The only other shapes I suggest you outline is the color of the peel where it meets the white rind, and a few of these shapes in here. And you're ready to move on to the next section. Don't worry about any of this. You'll understand why when we're in the painting stage. You can choose whether or not to paint a lot of the details in this image, and I assure you the painting will look excellent either ways. Adding these details in during the painting stage is incredibly easy because of their organic nature. You don't need a drawing to guide you. Plus, it frees up your style a little more, and that is ultimately what I am hoping to achieve in this course. I'm just going back and making sure to define these lines so that they're as clear as possible when it's time to do a transfer, which we're coming close to. I'll move back up into this area again, picking up where I left off. I'm going to continue following the outlines I drew on the photo reference, starting with the outline of the section of fruit. Just in case you lost me, I'm right here. There's a little triangle of negative space right here. Be sure to get that in. This line art map is a great example of why using the grid is so helpful and completely necessary for this course. I think it would be difficult to learn about an image in these terms without practicing it, 
numerous times. I find the grid to be extremely useful in helping students adjust to this way of creating line art. It really is a very different type of concentration than normal sketching or drawing, and it will understandably take some practice for many of you to be able to do this type of line art without using the grid, even students with prior training. Notice how rigid my lines are as I outline this area. I'm not fussing about getting every tiny shape and curve. That would be a waste of time because most of it would get lost beneath the underpainting and in layers of broad strokes. Leave some of that for the painting stage so you can have more freedom. I'll move to these shapes on the Rhine next. That's plenty of information. Finally, I'll move to the last section on the right. At this point, when you look at your drawing, the image should be starting to seem much less complicated to you. Start visualizing yourself painting in the shapes with flat values. Visualize how the first coat will look finished. Visualization is a vital part of painting. I want you to get in the habit of visualizing each step before you do it. Another important aspect of visualization, I find, is that it helps give you more positive self-talk. Self-talk is just the dialogue you have with yourself in your mind. When you're learning something new or doing anything for your self-growth, it's important to be mindful of keeping a positive can-do attitude, and visualization is one great way of building that. You would be shocked by how many students I message with who have adopted an attitude of negative self-talk. And believe me, I'm just as guilty of it. Any coach or athlete will tell you that overcoming those thoughts are part of the process, so it's okay. But remember, this is supposed to be fun. Take your time and enjoy the process. As usual, I'm just outlining shapes one at a time, starting with the outer edge of the section of fruit and working my way inward. The lines I choose to draw are the ones with the most defined edges. Look for this line here. It's one of the only ones I'm going to define on the fruit. The whole shape is almost all one solid value. This is where the fruit meets the rind, so it needs to be silhouetted because it's going to be painted gray instead of orange. I think this lighter orange shape stands out as well, so I'll put that in. Finally, down to the rind, and I'll outline all of the organic shapes made where the peel tore. There's a dark shape right here in the shadow that'll be a helpful landmark for later, and I think we're finished. Take a two minute break and let's move on to the next step in the process and turn this line art into a carbon copy. 